Good morning, everyone. Please be seated. I'm Don Tapscott, and I'm the Chancellor of Trent University. I'm also a proud graduate of this uh, great institution. And um, the band that played the opening uh, ceremony is uh, back in the room out there, but they had a rough night last <laughs> night, so they're just kind of getting warmed up. Anyway, this is a special day for everyone uh, here, and I'm just delighted to share it all with you. Uh, graduates, heartfelt congratulations to all of you on reaching this important milestone. I now declare convocation open. Good morning. My name is Leo Grork. I have the privilege of being the eighth president and vice chancellor of Trent University, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to the ceremony today. Uh, in keeping with Trent tradition, I want to begin by respectfully acknowledging that we are on the treaty and traditional territory of the Scugog Island, Mississauga. We offer our gratitude to our First Peoples for their care for and their wisdom about our earth and our relations. May we always honor those teachings. I'm very pleased to welcome graduates, their parents, families, spouses, partners, friends, faculty to today's ceremony. I did want to extend an especially warm welcome uh, to some special guests. From the Beth Israel Synagogue Executive Committee, Karen Fisher, Alvin Galley, Larry Gilman. Uh, from uh, the Trent Durham Community Advisory Committee that advises our Durham campus on uh, things going on in Durham. Uh, Pramila Radmahani, the CEO of the Community Innovation Lab. Thomas Q, the chairman of the Durham Chinese Canadian Culture Center. And while I'm at it, I want to thank Thomas for being a wonderful host on a, a trip we did to China to establish relations between Trent University and Chinese institutions. Daryl Sherman, the president of Wilson uh, Furniture. Uh, Doug Kirk, uh, the president of Durham Radio Inc. Alex and Janet Georgeoff, uh, Alex being the former Commissioner of Planning and Economic Development for the region of Durham. And last but certainly not least, uh, I want to welcome our, I'm going to put it this way, our own Gary Cubitt, the CAO of Durham, but he's our own, uh, not only because he's a graduate of Trent, but he's a member of a board, our Board of Governors. How about a round of applause for our special guest? I'd like to preface the awarding of degrees uh, by saying something about the convocation ceremony. And I like to think that our convocations at Trent are like Trent itself. And just to give you a flavor of that, I want to quote from a recent review of Trent University, uh, which describe us, I think, in a very accurate way. It described Trent as, quote, a prestigious and elite, I like that part, you know, I'm the, the president. I might say that again. A prestigious and elite small university, but one that is approachable and friendly. And I think that really captures the spirit of uh, Trent. And because Trent is a very serious institution uh, in terms of research, in terms of study, but at the same time, we pride ourselves in being a very friendly, open, uh, gregarious university. And like Trent itself, we want this ceremony both to have a serious side, a kind of formal side, but also uh, to have a friendly and very approachable uh, side. On the one hand, uh, this is a serious moment. This is uh, the moment when our students officially complete all their studies uh, for their degrees and move on to other things. At the same time, I do want to remind you that a convocation is a celebration. It's a party. It's a party that we are hosting to celebrate the successes of our students. So with that in mind, uh, I want to invite you, especially when the students are awarded their degrees, to enjoy a party atmosphere, 
okay? Shout if you want to shout, be loud, dance, come up to the front, take photographs of uh, who are who are, uh, the students who are coming by. Um, uh, if you want, you can celebrate it as a party to celebrate the fact that your son or daughter finally got their degree. <laughs> and if you want, you can say things that embarrass uh, your spouse or the people that are walking across the stage. That's perfectly okay. Uh, to our visitors, I did want to say that I hope you'll enjoy our deep sense of community that's so much a part, not just of Trent, but maybe especially of the Durham campus because it's a smaller campus. I'm pleased to tell you that community will be growing even closer as a community in coming years thanks to a board approved plan to build a new residence and academic space at the Durham campus. Uh, I think this will be a huge step forward uh, for the campus and uh, I'm going to ask that we have a round of applause for the board deciding to take this even further. Thank you, Stephen. <laughs> the more applause, the better. We're just warming you up here, okay? Uh, I invite all our graduates in particular to come back in a year or two and visit our new uh, digs. Let me end my remarks by saying to our graduates that you are joining a prestigious Trent family. It includes famous authors, Nobel Prize winners, Rhodes Scholars, and Governor General and Academy Award winners. This family includes scientists, artists, religious and political leaders, and perhaps even more importantly, a cadre of teachers, researchers, medical practitioners, mothers, fathers, and good citizens. I believe that Trent has prepared you well for the exciting and challenging adventures ahead. This is your moment, this is your day. Enjoy it as an important time to imagine your future and create a life of consequence and a purpose that is uniquely your own. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for our graduates, please. <laughs> Mr. Chancellor, I now call upon Professor Carolyn Kay to introduce a remarkable individual whose contributions will be recognized today with an honorary Doctor of Laws degree. Mr. Chancellor, Mr. President, faculty and staff, graduating students, friends and families. In 1944, at the tender age of 16, just a few years younger than many of you students graduating here today, Max Eisen was forced by the Nazis to leave his native homeland of Slovakia and to enter the human gate of a hell called Auschwitz. He witnessed and suffered under the terrifying Nazi barbarity that included the killing of children, and yet he survived, helped by a Polish doctor at the camp. But his mother, his brothers, his baby sister, his father and uncle, and more than 50 relatives were gassed and murdered in the Holocaust. He lost almost everything except his will to, to survive and to keep his family's story alive. His father's last words to him were, if you survive, tell the world what happened here. And he has done that. On May the 6th, 1945, Max was liberated by the 76th Tank Battalion of George Patton's Third Army. He would come to Canada as an orphan and later become a successful manufacturer. In Toronto, Max met and married Ivy Kosman, who is here. And he had two children with Ivy, Ed and Larry, who are also here. And they have grandchildren and great-grandchildren. In 1991, he began speaking to school children about his personal experiences in the Holocaust. And since that time, he has taken his story to schools, associations, professional groups, all across Canada, speaking to tens of thousands of young people and adults. At Trent University, he has given public talks many times, including to students here at Trent University, Durham. 
Max also takes part in the yearly March of the Living trips to Auschwitz, where students travel with him to Poland and learn firsthand about this deadly camp. He is a regular speaker for the Toronto Holocaust Center and the Simon Wiesenthal Center, and he is now one of the few remaining survivors of the Holocaust living in Canada. In 2016, at the age of 87, he completed a memoir of his remarkable life entitled By Chance Alone, published by HarperCollins to a critical acclaim and shortlisted for the prestigious Taylor Prize. As well, in 2015 and 2016, he was a key witness in two closely watched German trials of former Auschwitz guards who were convicted and sentenced. His participation in these trials is captured in the 2018 documentary film, The Accountant of Auschwitz, and was extensively covered by the Canadian media, including the CBC, the Globe and Mail, and the National Post. Today, our divided and threatened world cries out for heroes, not powerful political leaders who serve themselves, but ordinary and compassionate people who fight hard for a better society. You students can be these heroes. Max is definitely one. Max Eisen represents teaching at its finest, carried out with the desire to encourage historical knowledge and the importance of human rights for all Canadians. The Holocaust is a crucial subject in the history of civilization, and it must never be left behind or neglected. And we are so fortunate to have survivors like Max who have offered their personal stories and have worked tirelessly to see that this history remains alive. When all the survivors have passed away, we will lose this vital connection to our collective history. Let us never forget. For his courage in being a witness to genocide, his impact upon Canadian students, and his selfless work of public education, Mr. Chancellor, I have the honor of presenting to you for the degree of laws, honoris causa, Max Tibor Eisen. Congratulations, Dr. Eisen. It's my great honor to invite you to address convocation. <clears throat> Thank you for those beautiful words. Um, Mr. Chancellor, Mr. President, members of the graduating class, distinguished faculty, family, and friends. I made a number of visits to speak to the Trent University and Peterborough communities over the years thanks to the kind invitation of Dr. Carolyn Kay. In fact, I still have a Trent University mug that was given to me after one of those visits. I've used this mug so many times, I'm almost ready for a new one. <laughs> this occasion, however, is very special for me. It is indeed a privilege to receive the honorary degree that you are bestowing on me today. This kind recognition of my life's passion and purpose will be a highlight that I will always cherish. Fellow students, today is a significant day. Today marks the conclusion of your undergraduate studies. Hours of class time, tutorials, labs, essay writing, analyzing statistics, reading, and preparing for tests. All of your hard work is about to pay off, 
as you march across the stage to receive your degree. It's a time for smiles and applause. It's a time for photos and celebration. It's also a time for reflection. I'm a Holocaust survivor. In 1944, at age 15, I was arrested, along with my grandparents, my uncle and aunt, mother, father, two brothers and a baby sister, and deported to Auschwitz death camp in Birkenau. My grandparents, my aunt, my mother, brothers, and sister were murdered immediately upon arrival while my uncle, my father, and I were selected for slave labor. My father and uncle died several months later after Nazi doctors carried out medical experiments on them. I was marched out of Auschwitz in January 1945 on a death march, and I was eventually liberated in Ebensee, Austria in May 1945. As I was preparing to write this speech, I couldn't help but think about my past and all of those who never had the opportunity to pursue their dreams. I began thinking about the one and a half million Jewish children who never had the chance to spread their wings, whose talents have been lost to the world. I thought of children like Anne Frank a child who went into hiding with her family in an attic in Amsterdam. She kept a diary where she shared her innermost thoughts about life, love, her hopes and dreams. Sadly, Anne, along with the others that were hiding with her, were reported on by a Nazi collaborator they were found, they were arrested, and they were deported. Anne died only a few weeks before liberation. Anne was born in 1929. If alive today, she would be 89 years old, the same age as I am. How many books could she have written? I thought of a boy named Peter Gintz, who was born in Prague. At 10 years old, he witnessed the invasion of Prague by the Nazis and kept a daily diary of his life and the swift changes that took place. From his forced wearing of the Star of David, marked him as a Jew, to his deportation to Terezin concentration camp two years later. Peter documented it all. Immediately upon his internment in Terezin, Peter started a newspaper called the Vedem, meaning we lead. He wrote stories, shared facts he learned in school, and he drew charcoal sketches. One drawing in particular he named Moonscape, a copy of which was taken on the spacecraft Columbia by an Israeli astronaut, Ilan Ramon. Sadly, Peter's drawing did not make it back from space, and Peter himself never lived to learn of the Columbia tragedy. He was deported at the age of 16 to Auschwitz-Birkenau in late 1944, where the Nazis murdered him. I also couldn't help but think about my two brothers, Eugene and Alfred. Alfred was a darling. I adored him. Eugene, the older of the two, was brilliant. His path clearly was leading to university, where he would leave his mark on this world through either academia, religion, or both. However, like Anne Frank and Peter Gintz, Eugene and Alfred never had the chance to pursue their dreams. For me, all of these children are a reminder of the great privilege of education and the collective responsibility 
that we have to educate not only minds, but hearts. You're concluding one journey, but embarking on something new and exciting. You will have the great privilege and responsibility to shape the minds of future generations. I encourage you to take this responsibility with the caution and respect that it deserves. After a successful career in manufacturing, I chose to become a public speaker and have been speaking for 29 years. I could never have imagined more than 70 years ago as a prisoner in Auschwitz that I would be an educator in the field of Holocaust education. And the motivation for me today is stronger than ever. I see the importance in this choice as I'm witnessing a resurgence of hate that is eerily similar to the hate that I remember from my childhood. From my lived experience, I know that something like the Holocaust doesn't just happen. It all started with words. And those words kept rolling along and took on a life of their own. Those words, those lies, became the truth. It all starts with words, and it ends in terrible places. As I reflect on my life and think about the exciting future that lies in front of you, I'm reminded of the words of former U.S. Secretary of State William Jennings Bryan. I quote, destiny is not a matter of chance. It is a matter of choice. It is not a thing to be waited for. It is a thing to be achieved." End of quote. So how do we make this world a better place? As Brian suggests, you have the choice to be a part of the solution. Continue to educate yourself. Ask questions. Encourage others to ask questions. Don't be swayed by lies. Check facts and be careful with the information you encounter. Think critically about world events and don't accept an easy answer. Invite guest speakers who have experienced the consequences of hatred and intolerance. For me, speaking to law enforcement and military professionals, educators, business leaders, and many, many students has been the most rewarding part of my life. It has truly really been an amazing experience to see young people hear my story and show their thoughtful consideration through questions and letters sent to me. It is a privilege to be asked to speak and it has given me a whole new life. In fact, it's what led me to write my memoir, along with a promise I made to my father, I would tell the world what happened to me and my family. You will leave here today with a piece of paper that now enables you to pursue your dreams. You will be leaders, whether it be in industry, in finance, the nonprofit sector, government, arts and humanities, or sciences. You have the skills and tools necessary to build a professional career. Use those skills to build a good life, a good career for yourself. But most importantly, use those skills to build a better world for future generations. Find your passion and work hard on it. Continue to learn. Support your colleagues. Celebrate your successes. Learn from your mistakes. Be generous with your praise. Be mindful of your criticism. Be honest. Don't shy away from difficult conversations. Be humble. 
Act with courage and integrity. Listen, truly listen. Be grateful, be kind. You truly can achieve whatever you set your mind to. But don't be afraid to adjust your goals along the way. I accept this honor today in the names of my siblings, Eugene, Alfred, and Judith. I thank, my, <clears throat> I thank my family, my wife, Ivy, my sons, my grandchildren, and great-grandchildren for their support and for giving me a life here in Canada. And I will leave you with the last words of four courageous young women who spoke to a forced assembly of the camp's prisoners just before they were hanged in Auschwitz I on January the 6th, 1945, because of their act of resistance by for helping to destroy one of the gas chambers and crematoria, thereby saving many lives. I can still see them standing tall and proud on the gallows. Their parting message to us were two Hebrew words, chazak ve'amatz, be strong and of good courage, these words continue to inspire me to this day. And I wanted to share them with you as you embark on the next stage of your journey. I congratulate each of you on your tremendous accomplishments. My best, my best wishes to you in your journey. Thank you. Thank you for those profound and inspiring words, Dr. Eisen. We will now uh, proceed to the awarding of degrees. Joe Muldoon, head of the Trent University Durham campus, will now present all candidates for all degrees. Uh, graduates, as Mr. Muldoon reads your names, you will cross the stage be congratulated by the chancellor, then myself, and then by the university registrar. Mr. Chancellor, I am pleased to present for the degree of Bachelor of Business Administration candidates whose names will be read, whom the Senate has duly declared worthy of the honor, that they may receive the degree at your hands. Dylan Anthony. Max Ferguson Billing. Patrick Boulanger. Cameron Dealey.
Stavrula Dava Osiliu. Kitty Lynn Erickson. Raymond Gordon. Jasmine Hickey. Anum Javit. Cyril Kipome. Sherry Montaigne. Madia Fatsima Naki. Vipin Chandra Nara. Benjamin Nichols. Alexandra Rasico. Anjan Roy. Janelyn Toy. Paul Charles White. Sandra White. Please join me in congratulating the recipients of the Bachelor of Business Administration degrees. <laughs> Mr. Chancellor, I am pleased to present for the degree of Bachelor of Arts in the Honours Program, candidates whose names will be read, whom the Senate has duly declared worthy of the honour that they may receive the degree at your hands. Karen Albright. Sean Michael Badgley. Megan Neem Bailey. Cherise Bailey. <laughs> Joseph Cassidy Scoff. <laughs> Victoria Fern Cote. <laughs> Kifa Desai. Taylor George Dobbs. <laughs> Megan Carey Defet. <laughs> Nancy Lee Gazo. Natasha Lynn Geiker. (laughs) 
Jaslyn, Nicole Grove. Rachel Jansen. Daira Kearney. Nicholas Krizanik. Rodrika Mahane Thurin. Angel Mochula. Rachel Morrison. Amanda Lee Machette. <laughs> Jessica Lynn Prentice Nash. <laughs> Anna Gabrielle Norton. Vivian Ellen Louise Parks. Samuel Richardson. Magdalena Lauren Simulski. Yeah. Sarah Marie Tax. Nicole Sarah Taylor. Thomas White. Please join me in congratulating the recipients of Bachelor of Arts degree in the Honours Program. Mr. Chancellor, I am pleased to present for the degree of Bachelor of Arts in the general program the candidates whose names will be read, whom the Senate has duly declared worthy of the honor that the candidates may receive the degree at your hands. David Annan. Eric Bird. <laughs> Rebecca Grimley. <laughs> Michael Lasella. Carissa Dini. Sorry. 
Kasturi Kanathas. Brandon Oak. Amber Thompson. Courtney Wilkinson. Please join me in congratulating the recipients of the Bachelor of Arts degree in the general program. Mr. Chancellor, I am pleased to present for the Certificates in Human Resource Management and Marketing and Entrepreneurship the candidates whose names will be read, whom the Senate has duly declared worthy of the honor that they may receive the certificate at your hands. Chelsea Gill. Alexandra Holland. Please join me in congratulating the recipients of the Certificates in Human Resource Management and Marketing and Entrepreneurship. <laughs> Mr. Chancellor, I ask you to confer degrees in abstentia on candidates whose names are before you and who are unable to be with us today. Professor Don Lavelle Harvard will now introduce the honor song. Before all words can be spoken, we bring greetings to all of creation and we give thanks for another day of life. Mr. Chancellor, Mr. President, honored guests and graduates, in the custom of the first peoples of this land, we offer the sound of the drum and our voices to honor our mother, the earth. We send our profound and deepest thanks to all creation. We greet the world with humility and embrace the richness, diversity, and the wonder of life. In the Anishinaabe teachings, the sound of the drum represents the original sound of our creation. That heartbeat of creation reverberates still and infuses our being with life. We sound the drum to connect us with all creation, to honor and celebrate life and live with humility among all living things. Today, we offer words of praise for those who are graduating. We offer words of thanksgiving to those who had made these accomplishments possible. We offer words of respect to those who have come before us and who have brought dignity to our lives. We offer words to remind us of the seven grandfather teachings, that we must live with respect, kindness, honesty, sharing, courage, and strength. And today we offer these words to honor Max Tibor Eisen, because you've reminded us of the power of words, the power of words to change the world we live in. You embody courage, and for that, we honor you. And today we offer this song to accompany you on your travels. May you travel well, and may your lives be filled with grace and dignity. Mr. Chancellor, Mr. President, honored guests, graduates, I have the pleasure of presenting Unity. Today they will be singing the bear song. The bear who embodies strength, courage, and her quiet wisdom in honor of our graduates. Ladies and gentlemen, may I ask you to stand if you are able for the honor song.
Chimigwech, thank you, Unity. You may be seated. Mr. President, I would like to invite Jess Grover, President of the Trent University Alumni Association, to welcome the graduating class. Mr. Chancellor, Mr. President, Dr. Eisen, graduates, honored guests, good morning. First, I must say to you, our newest alumni, congratulations and welcome to the family. I'm so honored to be here at Trent Durham's convocation. I love Trent Durham's spirit. My heart bursts with joy and a few tears to see you here amongst family and friends, a proud and strong community within the larger institution of Trent. This is truly the celebration of a personal, purposeful, and transformative little campus. Over the course of your studies at Trent, I know you've seen your campus grow. You are the trailblazers of this campus and your dedication, energy, and accomplishments are a big part of what has made Trent Durham so successful. You are integral to the flourishing of this campus, and I want you to know how grateful we are all for all that you've done to leave your mark on our university. I know how hard you've worked. I can see the joy and accomplishment you feel today. Treasure that and keep it with you always. You have taken all of the challenges and hard moments along the way and turned them into opportunities for learning and success. You've done this and I hope any moment you find yourself uncertain of your abilities that you remember today and remind yourself that you know how to achieve your goals. I'm sure that each of you have had at least one conversation where you've had to say, I go to Trent. No, no, not that Trent, Trent in Oshawa. I want all of you to know that the Alumni Association recognizes, respects, and celebrates the alum who come from Trent Durham. We recognize your experiences are unique within the alumni family. And to celebrate that, the Trent University Alumni Association will be bringing its annual meeting and volunteer reception to your campus for the first time this fall. Please join us to show that Trent Durham alum spirit. Take some, <laughs> thank you. Take some time today to update your contact info. You should be getting from an, e an email from me right about now, hopefully, so you can stay in touch. We need you as a part of our family to keep that Trent Durham spirit thriving in our association, and we want you to take part in our awards, benefits, and benefits uh, and events. Trent is not only a part of your past, but it is a part of your future. Stay involved in Trent and get involved with alumni. We are made better by your presence. Today, not only everyone here celebrates you, the entire alumni family celebrates you. On behalf of the Trent University Alumni Association, it is my honor and privilege to say welcome and congratulations. Thank you so much, Jess. Uh, as we come uh, to the end of the ceremony, uh, I want to ask you to help me say some thank yous. Uh, and I think I want to begin, and I'm going to embarrass them, but I'm going to ask Sarah Gallen and Rochelle Hall to come up. They're up in the balcony. Please uh, come forward. Come on. You can sort of pretend you're the queen and... Uh, <laughs> Now, what I want to say is, you know, we say that it takes a community to raise a child. It takes a lot of people to organize a convocation. 
Uh, and those of us on the stage get to be on uh, the limelight, but it only happens because of the work of a tremendous number of volunteers. I think of them as the unsung heroes of convocation. And uh, Rochelle is uh, currently the secretariat for the university, uh, but she's been at every convocation. This is our ninth convocation at Trent this year. We want to keep them small, so we do lots of them. And Sarah has been taking care of our VIP uh, chancellor and me and organizing things uh, behind the scenes. So for them and for all the unsung heroes of convocation, a round of applause, please. Now, there's another thank you that I want to ask the graduates uh, to help me with. Uh, and what I would note is you're here today, uh, and congratulations because of all the work you've done. Um, but not just because of all the work you've done. You're here because you have a support network. And one of the things I like about convocation is it's all about family. That's typically the core of it, uh, but friends are also the core of it. Uh, they've been your emotional support network, maybe even a little bit of financial help now and then uh, uh, when you need it. So I'd like to ask the graduates to stand and give a big shout out and thank you to your support network that's sitting with the rest of them. Actually, I, I want a louder round of applause, okay? Let's try that again, okay? Shout out. <laughs> thank you for that, and thank you to all of you for being here and being that support network. It means a lot to them. It means a lot to Trent University as, as well. Uh, uh, we will be shortly ending the ceremony. The procession will leave the stage after the singing of O Canada, and I'd ask you if you are able to remain standing for that. Uh, first, I want to ask uh, the Chancellor for some closing remarks. Well, thank you, Mr. President. and. Um, Thank you all for coming and uh, sharing in the success of our graduates and, and also uh, in the uh, growing success of this thriving community in, in Durham. And I'd like to thank Dr. Max Eisen in particular uh, for his profound and uh, moving um, and important remarks. I chair the nominating committee and our discussions are confidential, but I have to tell you uh, there was strong and unanimous support that we conferred this honor um, on Max. And I think not just because uh, we viewed him as being a, a very worthy recipient, but it's important that we learn from history. And if we don't learn from history, there's a danger of the past being repeated. And I'm very proud of Trent, actually, as a as a leader in fighting against uh, racism, injustice, anti-Semitism, and sort of evil in all the vile forms uh, that it takes. And having graduated uh, or started at Trent over 50 years ago, in its early days, I can tell you this goes back to the beginning of the institution, and it's in our DNA. And we need to remember that civilization, democracy are fragile things and that evil people can come to power, and that it all begins sort of almost uh, simply with words, as Dr. Eisen said. So uh, let's uh, heed his, high, uh, 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 heed his uh, important words and take them with us and, and never forget. I'd uh, also like to uh, give my heartfelt congratulations uh, to the graduates. And this is a very special day, and I hope you remember it not just as the end of a period in your life, but as the beginning of an important new chapter. Now, uh, closing remarks like this are often uh, designed to uh, inspire the graduating class and give some helpful hints for the future. So let me uh, be brief with that. Graduates, today is the first day of your life. Um, make lemonade out of lemons and uh, 
uh, do well by doing good, and um, what doesn't kill you only makes you stronger. And also remember to buy a good suit, and uh, of course a good shirt and shoes, hello, it's all about the accessories. Um, floss, can't overemphasize the importance of that. Increase the proportion of vegetables in your diet. And write this one down, okay? Don't forget this. Never, never, please show up at a job interview with your parents in tow, okay? <laughs> So that pretty much sums it up. Uh, are there any questions or can we move forward? No, seriously, I'm not going to give you any advice about how to succeed because you will all be successful. The research shows that. You'll all get jobs, you'll build businesses, you'll work for governments, you'll do great things. And it will all be related to your expertise and from what you've learned at Trent. But more important, it will be based on something deeper, on your capabilities. Because when you graduate, it's not just what you know that counts, it's your capacity. Your ability to think, to solve problems, to put things in context, to research, um, to understand the big picture, to be critical, to write, and uh, overall to reinvent your knowledge base have a passion for learning, as, as you will change everything about your knowledge as you go throughout life. And most important, to have clear values and a moral compass. And Trent has equipped you well. So by all means, as Spock would have said, uh, you know, live long and prosper. <laughs> and you will. Uh, you'll all live a lot longer than you can possibly imagine <laughs> with the new technology that's coming. But... Um, I'm, I'd like to close by saying that we need more of you than just being prosperous. You see, the, when you think about the world that my generation is handing you, uh, you've got to solve a lot of problems and fix a lot of broken things. Sorry about that. Uh, the world is too unstable, it's too unjust, it's too conflicted, it's too um, unsustainable. And your generation is really being called forth at this time in history to solve some very big problems. And as, um, as Dr. Eisen said in his very profound speech, we need to fight for what is right. And if you do that, maybe the smaller world that your kids inherit will be a better one. Now, I'm not suggesting that you all go work for an NGO or that you, you know, become a candidate for president of the world or something like that. But really, as, as Dr. Eisen said, you know, be informed. Um, be political in the, in the good sense of the term, small p. Understand what's going on in the world. Have a point of view. Uh, be active. As Dr. Eisen said, be strong. Have courage. Teach your children well. And overall, try and live a principled life of consequence. The stakes are very, very bit, uh, high going forward. The world is full of opportunities, and it also has some emerging very big challenges. So Godspeed. Think big. Be bold. Be brave. Innovate. Have fun. And change the world. Convocation is now dismissed. <laughs>